Good morning, everyone. I hung out with the person I talked about in the first video, and I've decided that I will just give him a nickname instead of constantly having this long description. So I'm just going to call him C. And um, he and I, so I had invited him to go for a walk t yesterday. Uh, well, I invited him earlier in the week and he had said he would be busy working. Um, but he finished up and he um, texted me and said, hey, if you want to go for a walk or we can play bocce. Um, so I said, let's play bocce. And so here's the main reason why I wanted us to play bocce. I wanted to play bocce because I wanted to see if I've grown. So I took an experiential learning class when I was in college and my professor um, had said to this statement to me and I think it's really, really true. And it's something I t have taken with me from this point forward. And he said, where else do you see this in your life? And this was when I did repelling and all the emotions and the feelings I had when I was repelling. So I noticed how I played the first time I played bocce with him. And just the overthinking, the hesitation, the not knowing what to do, the all of these things. And I felt like, wow, what a microcosm of my life. And if I can see that I'm not overthinking things, if I can see that I am able to just play the game in a way that I didn't play it the other two times that we had gone, then I know that I'm making progress in my own personal life. So I went over and I picked him up um, to to head over there because um, we were going to just ride together. And um, so it was interesting because I was like, oh, let's see also. I wanted to see how much progress I had done internally if it was going to be weird to see him or if it was going to be fine and it was fine um it was normal and um and so I had asked him how his day had been um and he started to share something that was like I was like that's interesting that he's sharing this and what am I feeling and what am I thinking um but at the same time, I was like, it, this is good because maybe he feels like maybe that's a way of, uh, of, of, um, reasserting that of our, our friendship, right? Like that we've always been friends. We didn't become more. And so maybe that's why he feels comfortable just bringing this up in this manner as the start of the conversation. So I was like, okay. And so I was it's hard for me to like drive and listen <laughs> as well because I, I, I have to think of two things at once. Um, and so I know he doesn't like to really get cut off sometimes, but sometimes I needed to do that because I, I couldn't remember off the top of my head how to get to the bocce place, um, taking a different exit and whatnot. And I missed one of the exits that we could have taken that I probably would have known how to get there. But anyways, beside the point, I get sidetracked. <laughs> Um, so we had a good conversation there. Um, then we just played and I was better. You guys, I was better. And, and there were things that he, uh, said during the bocce, um, games that I was like, Whoa, see, <laughs> those are actually really great, um, observations and, I think they translate to life. So in bocce, you have to watch the player in front of you to, especially if they throw, oh, I can't pronounce the word. It's like a paletta, I think. Oh, I think that's how you say it. But anyways, it's this like little ball. You throw it and you, the goal is to get the closest to there. And the, the biggest goal really is to get all four as close as possible. But if at least one, right, to, to win the game. So when you're not the one throwing it, you, you watch the person that did throw it. And if they get close to it, you just follow their line. You follow what they did because you're both trying to get to the same goal. But if you don't watch the person 
and they did get close to the goal and you stand somewhere else and or do something else, you might not get closer or you might get a better angle and they'll learn from you, right? So the goal is one to watch, like what the goal is to get to that little ball, but also to learn from each other, right? To to learn from each other, even though you're, you're in competition, but you both have the same goal, right? Which is to get closest to that little ball. Um, so it's a game of adjustments. So he would always tell me this before. This is a game of adjustments. This is a game of adjustments. Like if you notice that something didn't work out the first time, you just modify, you just change a little thing and see if that actually helps you get closer to the to the ball the next time. So that was like, whoa, that's really true. And that, that's, um, that's true in my own personal life, right? Like here I am, th- the experience that I had with him helped me see, whoa, the things that I was doing in my life actually didn't get me to the, the, the ultimate goal in my head. But watching him and learning from him, right? I learned to modify, I learned to, to, to figure out, oh, these are aspects in my life that needs to change. This is how I need to grow um, in this stuff. There was another thing that he said in the game that I was like, whoa, this is, so, <laughs> this is another thing that translates into life. Um, so the thing is, once you've followed somebody's line, um, there's only, it's only so much that that could work. Because then suddenly the game could change. So suddenly the ball might be in front of the paletta. And, and, and so throwing it the same would not be a smart thing because you could potentially bump that ball closer to the paletta, which is what you don't want. You want to have your ball be closer. <laughs> so you have to change your your strategy. You have, you have to change where you stand you have to do something different. You can't keep doing the same thing because the circumstances have changed. The circumstances have changed, so you can't do the same thing anymore. It is changed. And you have to be able to recognize that. Or you're going to keep doing the same thing and it's not going to work anymore. That is also like life. Um, the other thing is um, being very intentional. He says, you know, this is a game of concentration. You can't just willy-nilly throw the ball because when you willy-nilly throw the ball or you try to speed things up or you try to make it go faster and instead of slowing down and, and thinking about things, you don't do well. Just it, Which is like not my strong suit. I tend to, I tend to not think enough. And I th- tend to just throw the ball just to get it out of there. And um, so it's like, ooh, the discomfort of me like settling in and s- sitting in it and waiting to throw that ball. I mean, I'm like, man, this is like my life right here. And so that was a lesson too, because he's like, do you want to see what the situation is? Do you want to come up here and see the situation? And help you? Th- that can help you decide what you want to do next, right? And I was like, yeah. So I would go up there and I would look at the situation because sometimes, sometimes the ball looked much closer than it actually was. So that I thought, oh man, that's, like oh my word you've just beaten me already but the closer I am I'm like oh wow the ball there's so much space between the two and I could sneak that that ball in (laughs) and if I if I figure out the angle or whatever so it was like really a lot of great life lessons because it is about looking at the situation um, being able to slow down and being intentional and oh my word there were so many good things Um, I the one thing that I did recognize with myself in that whole situation is that I, I think my nervousness, I still think there was nervousness, not because, oh, I'm into the person. I think it was more so the discomfort of silence. Um, and I, and I think it's learning for me to like breathe so I, I, I talked a lot like and, and fast and I didn't allow for processing time, which is, again, how I played, easily could play bocce. So these are all real like lessons. Like how would I speak? What tempo would I speak if I 
allowed space for silence. I allowed space for processing. I allowed allowed for certain things that my own personal discomfort is keeping me from doing, you know? So that's pretty much it. It was a really, it was, we ended up playing and uh, picked them up probably around 8.15 and we probably, and dropped them off around uh, 11.15, I think, maybe. Uh, um, because we play two rounds, so you got to get to 12 points. And so I think we, we were still in the second round when it was like 10.40. So, um, so yeah, which is a good sign because that means that I've gotten better because <laughs> he would have like, like won really fast before. So yeah, so it's been progress. Bocce really has taught me a lot about life lessons for me. And I'm really going to take those life lessons and really think about them um, because yeah, like that's really interesting to me how much bocce really translates and I, I do feel like I have grown as a person and it has even shown in the way I play bocce so anyways that's my story